So guys, speaking of phased array antennas and Starlink, let's move on to some news and we'll, we'll so we can keep this rolling. Uh, but this morning there was a Starlink launch. This was uh, the 11th operational launch, the 12th overall Starlink launch ish uh, batch of Starlink satellites. And it was beautiful. Uh, it went off this morning at, Oh, I don't know. 12 hours ago from now. I don't remember, like 845 or something this morning. <laughs> yeah, I slept. I was still awake. I, sleep. <laughs> I totally forgot. <laughs> this was only the second flight of the, uh, Booster 1060. So it was 1060.2. So that's why it looks pretty fresh compared to other boosters in their fleet, uh, which is funny to see. Uh, we haven't heard any news still of whether or not they retrieve the fairings. They must not have caught them because they normally let us know if they catch them. Usually oh. that means there's high seas or something. Oh, sorry. The fairings I'm, break up. Yeah, and exactly. Um, and yeah, and it, it was just absolutely uh, a, a perfect landing as as we are seeing these days. But they did send out both uh, Go Searcher or sorry, Go Mystery and Go uh, Go Mischief uh, because that, that's one of the reasons the rumors had it that they might be delaying the Starlink launch because it's supposed to launch on Sunday alongside Salcom. And each one of them was only going to have one fairing catching ship, but they ended up scrubbing all the way until Thursday. And a lot of people were saying, well, maybe they just wanted to make sure they had both fairing catching boats out there to support um, to support Starlink, Starlink 11 or 12 or however you want to say it. Had you heard about that, Scott? Was that something? About the, the Starlink launch? As I said, I managed to not wake up in time. <laughs> Which is good because, you know, I've had this experience of going to sleep and waking up and hearing about a rocket disaster. And so I, you know, get up and immediately make a video about it wearing my dressing gown <laughs> to the extent that it is now known as the dressing gown of doom. <laughs> <laughs> I did not realize that. Uh, but we did have a gorgeous deployment this morning of the satellites too, and they did it only. F- Once again, did we see the the bar spin off this time, or did they, they cut that? They did out again? actually. They allowed it. They're not showing it on Twitter, but they did actually show us the the tension rod being deployed. The tension rod release, because there's yep. some discussion about whether that's so patented and secret that they don't want to show the world. But I think it's just as likely that it bumps their antenna and they can't you know track <laughs> oh right that's probably just as yeah this is likely <laughs> no, but it is we have only, we've only seen it like in a <laughs> rare number of cases right what were you saying joe i said no let's go with the conspiracy theory yeah <laughs> always a conspiracy but it was it was a beautiful launch this morning and uh yeah that like i said that was not the only launch this week because earlier this week we did see Salcom. Uh, wait, was it Salcom 2B? I don't remember, or 1B. Salcom 2B, 1B? Uh, yeah, Salcom 1B, and this was the second of the Salcom satellites. And um, it was, uh, the cool thing, this had a couple cool things. Well, one of the most notable is it was a return to launch site landing. We haven't seen one of those since CRS-20. say, yeah, we haven't seen that in a long time, it seems like. It's been... Yeah, that's because they've mostly been launching Starlinks. I, I, I've <laughs> noticed that SpaceX have not had a lot of commercial customers this year. That's true. Almost hmm. all their launches have been Starlink. Th- and those that was my are theory. Loaded as heavy as possible. Yeah. That was my theory a while ago. You know, Starlink. I feel, and Tim and I have argued about this, but I feel is going to be a huge moneymaker for them. And they could almost just say, "Okay, guys, this is enough." You know, like we don't need other clients right now because we know this is going to bring in so much money. I don't think they're turning down clients. I just think that they they've used up their backlog. Mm. Yeah. They're getting close. It feels I just like. figured that they they had a normal uh, number of clients, but they've just been launching so many Starship. Or I'm sorry, Star Starlink uh, launches that they just kind of. That's yeah. all we're noticing anymore. Yeah. I, well, I mean, if you look at it, like Sawcom, I think is one of their first commercial launches this year. Hmm. They've had hmm. a CRS launch, and they've had, of course, the Dragon uh, DM2. Wow. Yeah, but some of that could be, you know, COVID and the pandemic prevented. Sal conference was was delayed because the team to support it couldn't get to the U.S. at the time of the original. Because it was originally going to be something like, you know, um, May or wait, no, when was it? March or April was supposed to be Salcom, and then the pandemic kind of put it totally on on the on the books. Um, so there could be some other commercial launches that, that have been impacted by the pandemic. But one of the other cool notable mission notable things about this mission. Can, can I say why I'm disappointed by this launch? Oh, I can't wait. It was supposed to be in Vandenberg originally, and they moved it yes. to the east coast. Well, that's what I was going to say. This was a really unique launch because it flew into sun-synchronous orbit, which is basically a polar orbit flying 
well, slightly retro. Was it Sunsync? It's just a polar art, right? No, Sunsync ninety. Oh, Sunsync. Okay, yeah. I wasn't. I didn't get the exact. Yep. Yeah, so it's sun synchronous, and um, so it's flying at what is it, ninety eight point. 97.8 typically yeah depending upon the altitude it's crazy um <laughs> so um it's it what's cool about that is it actually flew into a polar orbit from florida and that hadn't happened since 1969 and the last time they did it they killed a cow <laughs> so i hope you all had a burger to celebrate <laughs> yeah, yeah why don't you tell that story there sky because i like joe's face right now <laughs> uh, no i mean it was they used to launch to polar orbits from florida and they I believe it was a Thor rocket, and yeah, you know the this first stage, the booster fell on Cuba and reputedly oh, killed a yeah, cow, yeah, okay. led to a bit that. of an international incident. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so they stopped launching from there. I mean, they had Vandenberg properly running at that point, so you know. Was that the Bay of Cows invasion? <laughs> yes, I, I think they were more concerned about uh, you know communist nation looking at their boosters because the oh. thor was originally uh, mm. an irbm that was supposed to uh, you know attack the soviet union yeah so there's uh so that was cool that was some fun history but uh scott did you say that you had a little insight on the the imager on salcom or what well not salcom no it's uh, you're talking there's another one the the, the electron, the electron launch? launch right they launched as yes, well yes they, they launched let's see here let's pull that up that was just on Sunday. Rocket Lab had a big week as well. We're kind of trying to fly through and these. And they just unveiled their photon satellite yes. bus. Yes, they did. They're, I saw they, that earlier. They, so uh, let's see here. We have to go a ways back because they've had a busy week. Here we go. So the, the Electron returned to flight after about two months. Um, after their 13th flight had that anomaly where a, a connector between the battery and the electric pumps uh, or something, something on the upper stage engine uh, connector, electrical connection. One of the connectors was loose, and every time it it jiggled, the current or the resistance rose, and the connector got hot, and eventually melted the potting compound, and the cable fell apart. That's crazy. And the engine stopped. That's so crazy. So they apparently were able to replicate it and figure out what exactly went wrong. And they had all the data, all the telemetry, and they leave. They they fixed it very quickly. I mean, two month turnaround is a quick return to flight. That's almost yeah. as quick as a normal launch cadence for a lot of companies. Yeah. Like that, for even for SpaceX, there's been two month lulls in their launch cadence. So, uh, I mean, SpaceX when they've fixed their problems, they've always had really long problem solving cycles, like six months. Yes. Because they ex- and they both had really interesting failures to a fail a, a you know failed connector. Kind of like, you know, mundane, to be honest. <laughs> Compared to but, a, uh, SpaceX's failures were cutting edge weirdness. Weird edge cases that no one had hardly experienced. Uh, but what's cool about this launch and something we did not know was that they were secretly, without telling anyone at least, they were testing out their new Photon, uh, which is basically a satellite bus uh, that's kind of to replace and, and, and or not necessarily replace, but be used... Um, as an option alongside their Curie kick stage. Or not Curie, what's the normal kick stage called? Um, I think it's just called the kick stage. Yes, yeah, just called the kick stage. Yeah, but it uses the Curie, a Curie, Curie engine, engine, which yeah. I believe is some peroxide engine. Something about peroxide fueled engine, I believe. Yeah, like a monoprop. Um, so they actually tested out their new satellite bus, the Photon, and uh, from they they did a little re- a little release today. And come to find out, um, you know, they just basically talked about how it was absolutely flawless and they're really excited to offer the photon because this is one of those um things that i I don't think a lot of people appreciate how groundbreaking it might be to just offer a universal satellite bus like this at the scale and offer kind of off the part shelves for other you know satellites for other small payloads if you need a star tracker a rocket lab will sell you a star tracker or a thruster or a you know uh, gyro, whatever you need, Rocket Lab is just making basically a parts catalog for satellites alongside offering the Photon as its own satellite. And that is something that... And it will go into interste- interplanetary space. It will be take ant- interplanetary payloads up to 40 kilograms. So you can send a payload to Mars or uh, Venus if you want. Which is awesome. And that's thanks to the, they will have an up, they have different kind of tiers of. They have a bigger uh, engine for that. They kind of have different sized and options for the photon itself. And the upper stage or that photon can use a bi-propellant stage with another electric pump fed engine called the Hypercurie, which is basically a miniature 
Rutherford. And the cool thing about it's got a yeah, it's got a much bigger nozzle on it. What's really cool about that? But that was a, that was the, like uh, the actual paying customer for that was Capella Space, and they've the mission was called I can't believe it's not optical. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. <laughs> their whole they're a company based in San Francisco, and they are doing synthetic aperture radar and supposedly offering very high quality imaging. In fact, I believe. It looks like the imaging that they offer is better than what uh, Planet offers with their optical. But the great thing about mm. you know SAR is that it can see through the clouds. So mm-hmm. what is this? Like it, it's a fascinating technology. I've been trying to learn all by about Planet. <laughs> is it Digital Planet you're talking about? Uh, I'm talking about. They used to be called Planet Labs. Planet now Labs. they're just called Planet. Uh, okay. And they they're the guys that launch the three U CubeSats, and they have you know, like two hundred of these. They basically do Google Maps. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But but it's updated every 24 hours. I have a friend that does, <laughs> awesome. uh, he was doing some different projects for the Gates Foundation and they were using, I think they're, yeah, there are two of the ones. It's Planet Labs and Digital Planet, I think, and they, one is super old school and the the method for the licensing of the images is insane. Anyways, yeah. There's, there's some interesting stuff you can do when you have pictures of all over the planet. <laughs> yeah, and when you have them updated every single day. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I think they were trying to look, it was like a malaria case tracking thing in Africa or something like that, and it was like, you can't, like, go ask people to check in with their cell phones at different locations, so you had to, like, try to see where people were migrating or something. I forget exactly, but it was something... Yeah, that sounds like a planet kind of application. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm always fascinated to watch the the arms control, you know, uh, open source intelligence people tracking stuff using planets uh, information mm. hmm. you know finding north korean you you know right. uranium enrichment facilities and things like that that's crazy. well and you see him you zoom in and eventually they're watching a scott manley video there about how to yeah <laughs> <laughs> about how to if, I, if I, like, I went hey, in my backyard and just like mooned the sky for 24 hours would you would be in there but you might be unrecognizable <laughs> I mean, I wouldn't uh, recognize what your butt looked like anyway. Right, but. Right. I mean, it'd be really shiny. It would shiny, be the brightest like, thing. Yeah. <laughs> the brightest in thing in the, in the frame. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. So, that that was uh, an ex- it's been an exciting week for Rocket Lab. I'm glad to see that they are back at it. They are ready to go. You know, they're. it just seems like they, they made all the right steps. I'm, I'm excited to see that they... Are just yeah, it, it's cool that they just recently announced that they can upgrade their payload capacity to, to three hundred kilograms, and now they're with the the extra stage now, right? Yep, basically. I mean, what they've done is they've essentially added a third stage, yeah. that's, and made it more capable. And they upgraded the first stages and the, oh, the overall battery architecture too. Yeah, more power. Yep, yep. So basically, greater power density out of those batteries directly correlates to a greater. That's what I love about the electron is that it's riding on one of the most competitive industries in the entire world. And they can just sit back and reap the benefits. Of course, lithium ion battery and battery technology. Are they going to be buying batteries from Tesla? (laughs) That would be ironic. Hey guys, thanks so much for watching this clip from our show. If that's just not enough for you and you want to watch the full episode, you can go to olfpod.com slash YT. And if you want more from us, you can consider becoming a Patreon member. You'll get early access to episodes. You can join our awesome community. You can actually watch us record live and get your name in the credits by going to olfpod.com slash Patreon. So thanks, everyone, for watching. Check back every Friday for new clips here and new episodes on the main channel. Thanks, everybody.